you know, I wrote the book on fasting in 1996. I wrote a book called Fasting and Eating for Health in 1996. And I've utilized fasting as a therapeutic modality my whole career. And um, so let me just say two things. That as having fasting as a tool in my toolbox has enabled me to aid, help some people I couldn't otherwise have helped. And I'll give you an example. This person wakes up in the middle of the night to take inhalers for asthma, and they can't do aerobics classes or do heavy exercise, so they start wheezing too much. Their whole life is revolved around taking their asthma inhalers. So I'm saying to them, I can get rid of their asthma, and I take them off their beta agonists, increase their inhaled steroids, take the, you know, get their health and cleaned up, and I get them so they're not so inflamed in a period of months. Now I'm gradually cutting back their inhaled steroid use little by little over a six month period, trying to clear up their lungs. And now I wanna take away their steroids completely when I think they're not gonna have an asthma attack. And, and, and to take it away, if they start to wheeze a little, or if I wanna start them fasting before I, as I'm taking it away, it helps suppress inflammation and curtails the hyperactive immune response and finishes the detoxification process. So it assures me this person is not gonna have a, a, an asthma attack. So the fasting, so the doing that fast at the end of the six month wean gave me the security to know that they would be breathing fine and further putting the finishing touches up on, on the artwork we've just created and having this being a new human being with a new immune system who's never going to have an asthma attack the rest of their life. So, so likewise, I've fasted people. I have people with their inflammatory bowel disease, so I fast two and three days a month just because it helps curtail the inflammation in their gut from their from their um from, from the natural tendency they have to be have, to have an irritated gut lining. So fasting can be useful as a therapeutic tool. And when you say fasting, do you mean one day a week, a seven day fast? What, how long are your fasts? I'm saying with regard to that asthma case with its fast might have been between seven and 14 days in that case. So that, um, but with my guard, with regard to the inflammatory bowel disease cases with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, they might be fasting um, two to three days each month, like to, in a row, two days in a row or three days in a row each month, right? On just water? On just water, yes, to rest their bowel each month. Great, um, thank you. But now the question is, what about the majority of Americans? Don't forget, 90% of Americans are food addicted, overweight people. And my major person I care for and work with are overweight people who, who are, have trouble staying with eating healthfully. They're distracted and they still continue to consume foods that are self-destructive. And when you put these overweight individuals on a fast, you, slow, you excessively slow the metabolic rate down and they become too often more food obsessed and they don't stay with the diet after the, so the fast does not make them stay compliant more when the fast is over as is claimed. So many of them go back to their former way of eating and gain the weight back and gain the weight back and more. I'm much more careful nowadays to make sure that people learn to eat healthfully and stay within that caloric window in which they don't become food obsessed, that they can still lose weight at two or three pounds per week. I might cut a person. So even the intermittent fasting of cutting people down to 500 to 800 calories a day can trigger some of these obese and overweight food addicts into binging again. And the fasting and binging mentality, and they're going to try to eat, gain weight and go on a long fast again and gain weight and go on a long fast again, is not the formula for long-term successful great health. The formula for long-term successful great health is to learn how to live and be healthfully and stay within that healthy window consistently for the rest of your life. It's being consistent in what you do day in and day out. And too many times... Fasting can lead to people going going off the diet and binging. And now that the metabolic rate is excessively slowed from fasting, they're going to gain even more weight back. And so they're going to yo-yo. Um, so I'm more cautious with the use of fasting. And I do not recommend it for people who are not, you could who have food addiction symptoms or are overweight and haven't proved their ability to be consistent with eating healthfully. Because you know there are people who are very successful in controlling their weight and helping moving from fasting to a healthy diet and sticking with it. But for too many people, which I consider the majority of people, it doesn't make for more likelihood of success. It makes for more likelihood of recidivism. So I'm not advocating fasting for all people. I'd rather them learn how to eat consistently healthy long-term and not restrict calories that severe, that Thank severely. You.